Hey, good morning. It's Patricia Murphy. It's Wednesday. This is Seattle Now. You know, I've been fortunate to be able to play uh, 10 amazing years, you know, in Seattle. And so my hope and goal was to be back there and, and keep winning it there. So you, uh, if push comes to shove, if things worked out, you'd like to stay? Oh, yeah. It's, to win more there, that'd be, that'd be all. I want to win three more Super Bowls. That's my focus. Is to get back. That was Russell Wilson just a few weeks ago on Sirius XM. Today, we know he won't be winning any more Super Bowls with the Seahawks. The city's star quarterback is hitting the road for good. In a minute, Washington Post sports columnist Jerry Brewer will explain why Russell is leaving and what the 12s should expect next season. But first, let's get you caught up. The University of Washington is the latest to get rid of its indoor mask mandate. UW said yesterday it'll make masks optional but highly encouraged during spring quarter. Beginning on March 28th, students, staff, and faculty can drop the masks indoors if they choose. They'll still be required in healthcare settings and on public transportation like UW shuttles. Seattle's outdoor streeteries are feeling a bit more permanent. Seattle Mayor Bruce Harrell signed legislation extending the program yesterday. The free permits allowed restaurants to create areas for outdoor dining tables. It was previously set to expire at the end of May. The extension goes until January 31st. Harrell says the extra time will allow the city to work out details for a long-term permitting program. And all the warmer, sunnier weather means sneezing season has officially started. The tree pollen count is bouncing between high and moderate this week. We can thank our juniper and cedar trees, according to the Northwest Asthma and Allergy Center. Other kinds of pollen, including grass, haven't made their debut yet this season, so stay tuned. Maybe keep some of those rapid COVID tests on hand just in case you need to check what you're dealing with. With the 75th pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Russell Wilson, quarterback, Wisconsin. Ah, I like this pick. I like this kid. I, I'm jealous of Seattle. I wish I could coach this kid. I found Coach Carroll, and uh, he just told me, you know, he gave me a big hug and just said, Russell, you've done a great job. You've had a great preseason. You've been a leader of this football team, and and you've worked extremely hard to be great, and uh, you know, it's your opportunity now. The Seahawks are going to the Super Bowl. Twelve, they're bringing the trophy home. Your Seahawks, Super Bowl 48 champion. At the beginning of the season, I told the guys, hey, you know, why not us? Wilson toward the end zone. in the backfield. Russell looks, throws inside. Oh my God, he's being caught at the goal line. The man who led the Seahawks to its first and only Super Bowl win is leaving. So long, Russell Wilson. Next season, he'll be taking the field for the team he beat to earn that championship title, the Denver Broncos. Jerry Brewer is here to help us make sense of this news. He's a sports columnist at the Washington Post, formerly the Seattle Times. Hey, Jerry, good to talk to you. Uh, Great to be here. Thanks so much for taking the time. You know, we have been hearing rumors that Russell Wilson might be leaving for a while, But just last week, the Seahawks said they had no plans to trade him. And last month, he said he wanted to win three more Super Bowls with the Seahawks. So (laughs) this is a big surprise for a lot of people. Yes, uh, that reminds you that in sports, um, the negotiating tactics are always like, please keep calling me. You know, no one ever (laughs) makes a definitive statement. Everyone is always tradable, even arguably the greatest Seahawk of all time. But why would the Seahawks want to trade away their star quarterback? Well, it starts with the the star quarterback's discontent with uh, the head coach, Pete Carroll. Um, mm. It's one of the great partnerships of the last decade in sports. However, as the Seahawks came down from their Super Bowl days, it became really apparent that Russell wanted to be in a more dynamic, creative offense. And Pete Carroll, who's a defensive-minded coach, wanted to kind of keep things the same. He always sees the the quarterback as the point guard, kind of make it a comparison to basketball. And in that, he wants the, the, the quarterback to absolutely not turn the football over, to be someone who hands off to the running back quite a bit, and when it's time to make passes, uh, play a very efficient style of play. And that worked for the Seahawks for so many years. Russell Wilson was one of the great fourth-quarter 
comeback players in all of the NFL, but he wanted to throw the football around the field like Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes and other MVP caliber quarterbacks have. A little bit of rivalry, though, with Denver here. I mean, for, for people, <laughs> people who go back 40 and 50 years, you know, remember when the Seahawks were in the AFC West and the Denver Broncos were one of, if not their greatest rivals. So that is an interesting little historical footnote to this trade. There was a time in the early 80s where you never would have thought that the Seahawks and the Broncos would make a trade of this caliber together. All right, well, here's what I'm hearing the Seahawks are going to get in the trade. Three players, including quarterback Drew Locke, two first-round draft picks, two second-round draft picks, and a fifth-round pick. Does this sound like a good deal for us? Yes, especially when you when, when you consider uh, they added a defensive tackle, last name of Harris, who had six sacks last year, which is an extraordinary number for a defensive tackle for a team like the Seahawks that, who haven't had a great pass rush. And they also added a, a kid named Noah Fant, who's 24 years old. He's a tight end, one of the best young tight ends in the NFL. So that's quite a haul for the Seattle Seahawks. If things go well, mm. it could be similar for NFL fans to a haul that people will remember the Herschel Walker trade between the Minnesota Vikings and the Dallas Cowboys. And that trade, when the Cowboys dealt Herschel Walker to Minnesota, stockpiled them with so many picks that it helped create the Dallas Cowboys dynasty of the 90s. I think that's what the Seahawks are hoping for. However, they are not the Dallas Cowboys of the 1990s, and they have a lot to prove, particularly because since their Super Bowl days, they have not utilized their draft picks very well. So they have to get back to building the team the way that they did in 2010, 2011, 2012, if they can do that, it might be quite a haul and it might be something that allows them to rebuild and create a new era beyond the Russell Wilson Legion of Boom days. Okay, so the benefit of this trade has yet to be revealed, right? To be determined. What does the future look like for the Seahawks? Who's going to step into Russell Wilson's shoes? Well, right now, the quarterback that they traded for, Drew Locke, would be the guy. Uh, however, he would be absolutely what you would consider a placeholder quarterback. Mm. He has not been – he has talent, but he's not been particularly outstanding early in his career. I think you never want to be the guy who replaces the legend. You want to yeah. be the guy who replaces the guy who replaces the legend. <laughs> absolutely, the Seahawks over the next season or two will be, will be in a hunt for a new franchise quarterback. And the reason that you don't trade away, the case against making this move and why people have so much trepidation about it is you can search for 5, 10, 15, 20 years for a quarterback the caliber of Russell Wilson. So there's a lot of pressure on the organization to do everything right over the next couple of years. What you can expect next season is not a very good season for the Seahawks. If they found a way to finish 8-9 and nine or 9-8, nine and eight, something very mediocre, I think that would actually be outstanding considering the fact that they gave up their franchise player. Uh, but it can be a pathway if they do everything right to be in a very good team, say, starting 2023 and forward. And it's interesting that Carroll was willing to commit to this, being 70 years old, the oldest coach in the NFL. We talked a little bit about, you know, how the future is yet to be revealed and you never want to re be the guy replacing the legendary quarterback. But what is Russell Wilson's legacy in this city? What does he leave behind for Seattle? And we always love to talk about this in sports. We talk about the Mount Rushmore. It's always that debate that we have whenever there's like a, a slow sports day. Uh, <laughs> Ru Russell Wilson would absolutely be on the Mount Rushmore of great Seattle sports figures. You have to put... Ken Griffey Jr. up there, you know, perhaps a, a Lenny Wilkins, a Gary Payton. Um, I'm kind of rolling through the candidates right now. He would absolutely be on that list. If he had played his entire career in Seattle and somehow gotten back to the championship level, he may have been someone who surpassed the likes of Griffey. Mm. I, don't, I don't think that that even though the NFL is by far the most popular American sports league now, 
I don't think he surpasses the likes of Griffey. I don't know that we will see a statue outside of the stadium one day for Russell Wilson, but we will absolutely see his name in the ring of honor. And when he goes into the Hall of Fame, say 10, 12 years from now, people in Seattle will celebrate him as one of the great athletes and one of the great people who's ever represented the city. All right, now that's 12 years from now. Maybe the 12s are feeling a little scorned today. How's this going to resonate? Uh, absolutely, they're feeling a little scorned. I think you're, you're going to start to maybe have some indication of how Seattle has grown up as a as a sports city, you know, some, a sports town that is still relatively young compared to, say, the Bostons and the New York cities, but a sports town that's been through a lot. He won't be hated like Alex Rodriguez was hated when he left Seattle. Uh, he, he didn't do it for the money. I think he just felt like the run had ended. We have been through as a city seeing King Griffey Jr. leave and go home to Cincinnati and then come back. You saw the Sonics trade Gary Payton. You've even seen uh, among the Super Bowl Seahawks, you've seen Richard Sherman leave and go play for the San Francisco Niners, 49ers, the rival. You've seen Marshawn not even get the farewell that maybe he deserved. So it's just the nature of sports that everything doesn't last forever. And even the greatest players don't play for the same team their entire careers anymore. And I think people will understand that. It's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt really bad if the Denver Broncos get to an elite level with Russell Wilson. So I think there'll be a lot of mixed reactions right now. But ultimately, you always come back to the footprints that, that a player left. And there's no doubt, just as, as a human being, in addition to a great athlete and the memorable moments that he had, uh, Russell Wilson stands out. And I think that will stand the test of time, no matter how hurt people are at this moment. A solid legacy in the city of Seattle. Jerry Brewer, sports columnist at the Washington Post. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Oh, anytime. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to Seattle Now. Claire McGrain produced today's show with help from Jason Pagano. Matt Jorgensen does our theme music. I'm Patricia Murphy. See you tomorrow. Hi there. One more thing. This year marks 70 years of KUOW keeping you informed and connected. As we look forward to the next 70 years, we'd love to hear from you and learn about what KUOW means to you and why public radio matters. Call 206-897-1303 to leave a quick message or visit KUOW.org slash testimonials to learn more.